Hey all, welcome to Circle of Tone, and that's how you start a video. Richie Blackmore, Machine Head era of Deep Purple. And uh, this one got me pretty frustrated because Richie Blackmore was pretty, pretty notorious for keeping his cards close to his chest. That's an understatement. Now and then he lets a few things slip, but, but he never tells you the exact gear that he used. Sometimes he would tour and he would put a Vox inside Marshalls. They used to call it a Vox in the box because he kind of, uh, Marshall were really bent over backwards for him. So he kind of sneaked a few of his Voxes inside Marshalls and played live with them. Dokes is roadie. He'd put preamps inside of his strats. He'd mod the actual Marshall majors. So even if I had a Marshall major, even if I had a strat, which I, you know, I kind of do, a, a Japanese strat, I can't get his tone especially because he also used the old desktop style John Hornby Skew's Travel Booster. So it's like, there's so much like scalloped frets and use the tape recorder, a reel to reel, but that was, I think that was after a lot of the scalloped frets, uh, perhaps even a lot of the mods. I believe the Marshall Majors were modded and for more volume, he claimed 400 watts, like again, pinch of salt, man. Anything that comes out of his mouth because he is a vagabond, batshit. I love him. He was rock and roll. He was a son of a bitch. One of these days, I'm gonna, when we're playing on the road, I'm going to attack Ian Gillen in the back alley. He's bigger than me. So he's probably a better fighter. So I'm gonna do it with a few friends of mine, probably Swedish, and we'll beat him up, but he won't know it's me. And that's missing rock and roll now, a little bit of aggro, you know? So what did I use? I actually uh, I had two pops at it. The one that got closest, funnily enough, was through my Fender basement. It's like a late 60s version. But uh, day and age, day and age pedals come up trumps for me. He actually made me a John Hornby Skews style treble booster and he made it uh, pink for my daughter. So day and age pedals really helped me out again. I've got a bunch of his pedals. Uh, here is one of his Big Muff style pedals being boosted by a microamp. When I hear you can hear a piano fall, you can hear me coming down the hall. If I could just hear your pretty voice, I don't think so. These are legit, and uh, I kind of messed up because I said that he these, these pedals cost like 60 70 bucks made in America with American or European parts I thought the parts were at least were from China but no he uses good parts I don't know it's more it's got to be a labor of love for him because he's not going to be making much money from all the time that it takes to, to hand make pedals in the USA you know so go and check him out if you are into fuzzes boosts all sorts of uh rare discontinued pedals that he does his own flavors of really cool stuff man so go and check him out uh, i'll leave a link in the top comment what i used was the day and age uh hot pink boost and also i used a so-called japanese stratocaster because when i bought this from the wonderful people that guitar center used in the case it said uh, this was returned by a customer because it was a fake but it might be an interesting one to see if I remove this neck to see if it's a real one. I love this thing. So I was like, it's a Japanese strat to me because I would not send it back because I loved it so much. So maybe it is a Japanese strat. I hope it is. Otherwise, I'm an idiot. Maybe I'll do a reveal on this, huh? On a, on a separate video to see if uh, I am as knowledgeable as I think I am because there's no decal on it. But I think it's, it's quality. I think it's a Japanese strat. Could be wrong, though. And uh, maybe I'll be red-faced on that one. Speaking of wrong, what did he use on this era album, on Smoke in the Water, things like that? Uh, it was recorded in two separate uh, places. The original place that they wanted to record it in was actually burned to the ground, hence Smoke in the Water, because a Frank Zappa concert, somebody let off a flare gun and just set fire to this massive uh, <laughs> casino type of place. They had to scramble. They went to one little hotel where the, the, they finished one song and they ended up having the cops try knocking the door in to, you know, because of the noise complaints. And they finally ended up in the, these hallways of this like abandoned hotel. And that is why 
you shouldn't think that you need a professional, wonderful studio to record something great. You know, this was in, you had amps in hallways. They had uh, a truck, I believe, with uh, all the recording equipment in it. So long cable runs. So it's not exactly something that I can recreate. But I had a go and I really liked it. It's it's one track of guitars that you hear with my intro. And I'll play another version, which I recorded with an AC30 clone. So I got the same boost going through an AC30 and that was different speakers. We know he used two pre CBS strats. We know he used the treble booster, the, the desktop type, not the pedal. And we know that he used a Marshall Major and an AC30. We don't know what he used on which because Richie Blackmore. <laughs> so that, I guess that is the crux of uh, what I can claim without getting, you know, uh, Black Sabbath. So the speakers, I presume, because he said he used a 4 by 12 Marshall on it. And so I presume from that era, it's most likely to be greenbacks. So I use 1969 greenbacks. And uh, I don't have the Newman microphone that they used in that era, which is a dark mic. So what I did is I mixed a ribbon mic with a dynamic mic, just to try and get that half, uh, that warmth that you might get from that microphone. So if you know exactly what you use on Highway Star, with quotes, don't just say, I heard this or this, I remember this magazine quote. I want fucking quotes, bruh. Come at me. It's a circular tone, bitch. We don't mess around. If you put a gun to my head, I believe Highway Star was the Marshall Major. I think it was. Uh, because I tried to get close with my AC30 clone. It could have been it could have been a preamp in, inside the strat then. I'm not if anybody knows when they started using the Dokes mods on his strat, let me know in the comments. I couldn't get a, a, a definitive date on when they, those were installed. When I was using the AC30, I was using modern speakers, Al Nico speakers, the blue and the gold mixed. So I'm not sure if uh, that might, if I had that going through the old Bulldogs or whatever was in the AC30 he was using, or even if you went through the, the, the greenbacks. So it's a, uh, who knows, who knows? It's a, it's a very convoluted time. He was a tinkerer, so who knows? And maybe he, even he doesn't know. But all I know is that I couldn't nail it, nail it, but I got, I think I got the, a lot of the energy without this little tiny fuzz fuzzed out aspect of it. And the fuzz might have even been from the Helios console, really driving that. I used a a, a 1073 style Neve uh, preamp on mine. So I'll put all the settings that I use, all the gear that I used. I had this basement on 10, because he would always use his AC30 on 10, you always. And uh, I'm not sure if he did that with the 400 watt, so-called 400 watt Marshall Majors, but uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised because he was a uh, big in the one-upsmanship. So including just one of my favorite, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this up now, but one of my favorite stories of his, he's in this huge festival and his stipulation was that he would go, it was something like, I have to go on either at dusk or just after dusk. But there was obviously some promotional mix up and they wanted them to go on when the sun was shining. So Richie Blackmore threw a fit and it wouldn't come out of his trailer. It had like hundreds of thousands of people waiting in the sun with no music playing, with no band or anything, just because of him. And then when he finally, finally came out of his trailer, he got on stage and he put explosives underneath the guitar amps. And on the last couple of, I think it was the last song, bang he like put a hole in the stage <laughs> he's just an absolute savage man he's do not mess with that man he might be into the acoustic into the mellow stuff these days but uh i think that there's a lot of darkness in that man and heavy metal is shaped because of lunatics like him and i love it i just love it rock and roll man it's missing a bit of attitude a bit of piss and vinegar and uh, today it's like like i say it's one long vanilla sausage on rails that we have to deal with. And I'm going to have to start doing some more videos on this thing because it's becoming ridiculous. The guitar is making a bit of a comeback, but in the lame sphere, I want to do a little bit of a uh, video on the resurgence of guitars, but rock and metal is not part of that resurgence. Not one bit. It's mostly pop music, but that's kind of a start, right? So if we st start seeing more people uh, holding guitars that kids can look up to, then maybe the gateway drug 
of uh, we'll start getting people uh, into more extreme or more attitude in the music, you know, rather than Ed Sheeran breaking records with his payola. It's... All right, guys, <laughs> here he goes. Before I let you go, and I'll show you the AC30 version of the song that I recorded, uh, I'll just put my, my, my other video track with it because I didn't track the video. But thanks to my patrons of Tone. We have a couple of new ones. We have Andreas L and we have Nolan N. So thanks, Andreas. Thanks, Nolan. You guys are awesome. Keep these speakers flapping because I have to reach 100 patrons before I can cut my strings because it's an old pact I made with my subscribers <laughs> and it bit me in the ass two years later and I got these eye daggers coming at me the only thing the only reason that nothing's coming out of this is that I don't think I've changed the strings since I bought this <laughs> so that's a nice excuse it's so nice to play this around my daughter without watching out for her eyes you know the struggle is real all right chaps I'll be back sooner this time I took two weeks off really it's some stuff going on just take a look at this picture I am having, I'm going to have to downsize, like, i got to realize my channel is dead and I'm going to have to sell practically everything. Help! <laughs> Patron, please. Or just subscribe, like, share. That, that helps me more in the long term. All right, boys. See you next time. Circle of Town. stage and I'll be playing with my amplifier which was a 280 watt Marshall amplifier which was the, the most the loudest amplifier ever built I used to point it at the singer so consequently his hearing is not so good mine is perfect